Hey guys, TechieKHD here again with another video, and today I'm going to be giving you guys the review of the Sony A6300. A prerequisite to this is the fact that I'm coming to the Sony system for the first time from being a Canon user for the last couple of years and shooting Nikon before that. I did only truly get serious with photography when I started shooting with my Canon 70D though. Regardless, let's start with the build quality. I think it's extremely important to have a camera that is well built because it makes a difference between you wanting to grab it and go shoot or not because you're afraid of breaking it. The camera is built entirely out of an ultralight and strong magnesium alloy, which feels great in the hand. The camera is also super light because of this, and I find myself taking it out more than I did my 70D. This is hindered a little bit by this massive Sigma 18-35 lens I use on it, which makes it super front heavy, but seen here with the Canon 50mm 1.8, it works just fine. I'm also using the camera with the Sigma MC11 adapter, for which I could make a dedicated review if you guys would like to see that. The button placement on the camera I think is pretty average. The only two things that bother me about this is that the rotary wheel next to the screen is a little too sensitive, and you can press the d-pad while rotating the wheel sometimes, and it gets a little annoying out in the field. It's something you get used to dealing with, but it's a small annoyance at a price range of $1000 that the A6300 comes at. Also the button placement for the record button is pretty terrible. The A6000 have this problem as well, and you kind of always start a shot off kind of jittery, even on a tripod because of its weird placement. Next to the record button are also the hooks for attaching a strap. These have little triangular pieces attached to them as well which move around and were super annoying so I just removed them and put them back in the box. Apart from these ergonomic complaints, despite the camera's small size, it is actually relatively comfortable to hold. This is in part due to the fact that in using the camera with the lenses that I do, I often end up putting my left hand on the lens rather than the body of the camera. But that's something typical of shooting with cameras with interchangeable lenses, but also because of the excellently contoured grip, which is deep and very easy to hold onto even when just walking with the camera in your hand. As for ports, it has a micro USB port, a microphone input jack, and a mini HDMI port to output 4K. There's no headphone jack here, but I've never really needed one. The screen is a 3 inch display with great color representation and non-existent lag. But the thing that irks me coming from the 70D is the fact that it isn't a touchscreen. In 2016, especially with the autofocus capabilities of this camera, it may have been acceptable on its predecessor, but it's definitely a massive con of the A6300. The screen also doesn't flip out, only up and down, which is alright but makes shooting yourself a little challenging. Definitely not a deal breaker though. The incredible digital viewfinder however is amazing. I absolutely love it. Coming from an older optical viewfinder, this is much better. It has 100% coverage, looks great, is super sharp, and having a level in front of my eye when I shoot is an amazing feature. I never have to correct the horizon in Lightroom ever again. People seem to give Sony a lot of flack for its menu systems, and while it takes a little while to get used to coming from Nikon or Canon, it is actually quite intuitive, and everything with its tabs and submenu categories all start to make sense over time. Navigating it, however, could have been made a million times easier if we had that touchscreen. Now let's talk about the image quality. I started shooting with this camera in full manual, as I always do, and I love the images I've been able to get out of this thing. When I offloaded them onto my computer, however, for the first time, I was almost a little disappointed with how lackluster they came out, but I understood why as soon as I imported them into Lightroom. My Canon 70D used to take vibrant photos straight out of the camera. But that left, that left a lot to be desired in terms of corrections to be made in Lightroom to get a neutral image, after which I would then have to re-edit and try and achieve the look that I wanted. The A6300 takes absolutely neutral pictures straight out of the body, with so much potential, and they look stunning after a quick edit. They're always level thanks to that level in the viewfinder, and also always in focus because of Sony's claimed fastest autofocus system in the world. And it truly is. It's super fast and super accurate. It has 425 phase detection autofocus points, which works so insanely well that it's ridiculous. I've never had an autofocus shot. I now always leave it in autofocus mode, which leaves me free to fine tune everything else even more accurately now and get even better images. They look amazing and I'm definitely very very happy with them. The video side of things is even more exciting. This tiny little camera is able to shoot in 4K. In some ways, even sharper than its bigger brothers, the Sony A7S II and R2, because it actually samples a 6K image and downscales it to 4K. You do need to be shooting in the higher bitrate versions for that though, which require a faster SD card, which I'm now using. It also shoots in Super 35 mode, and can shoot S-Log 2 and 3, which means getting that ultra-neutral image straight out of the camera, 
makes color correction so easy. Low light performance is also excellent. I get a noise free image every time, even at higher ISO levels. The processing is great and makes for a clean, sharp reproduction while being able to capture areas that I sometimes wasn't able, even able to see with my eye. My only gripe here is the lack of in-body stabilization, which the A7S II and R2 offer, but at a much higher price. They aren't worth the upgrade for that one feature alone, but at this price range, stabilization should have definitely been a given. Lastly, the battery life. The A6300's battery is pretty bad, there's no putting it any other way. It's made up for by the fact that you can charge the battery inside of the body of the camera with the micro USB cable, which I've actually found to be quite convenient, but I would definitely recommend picking up a wall charger and a couple extra batteries for longer shoots because you're absolutely going to need them. All in all, the Sony A6300 has been an excellent upgrade from my Canon 70D. I was always on the fence between switching from a DSLR to a mirrorless camera, but I've been nothing but happy ever since I got the A6300. It's an excellent little camera with insane capabilities. I've been wanting to switch to Sony for some time now, and I'm super happy with my decision. Thanks again for watching guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button under the video and subscribe for more. Have a great day, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.